So, we are Metal Loud right now. I'm Sean Gonzalez. I'm hanging out with Tom from Metal Loud, and we're talking about The Chariot, and we are here at the finale of the release in 2012, and that is One Wing. And I promised I would tell Tom exactly where I was, what I was doing, and how I, how I heard this record. So, it was August 28th, 2012. It was a Tuesday, and... The record had just been dropped, and it was my first day at a job that I'd had for like three and a half years, actually. Um, I My first day, like, training as a server, I came home from that, and then I <clears throat> was doing psychology homework um, for Dr. East at University of Northern Iowa, and I put this record on, and I immediately stopped doing any homework and just freaked out and, like, danced in my apartment. So... One Wing was recorded with Matt Goldman. It was recorded in the absence of Wolf. So Stevie kind of took over the bass parts. And Fight Me, this is probably the best metalcore record to come out within the past decade. I don't know about metalcore, because it's, <laughs> it's not... It's not even a metalcore record. It's not but. pure... Like, that's... A, <laughs> but yeah. I think I think it's definitely a great album. Um, I, I was surprised by it. I wasn't expecting... It's a sound this way because uh, it starts off with forget, and it's just this. The, it, it's that has to be the heaviest chariot song that I've ever heard. It is yeah. just pure in your face, and the the part where everything kind of just drops out and you're doo, 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 yeah. That part just holy shit. I remember I remember listening to that the first time in my car, and I had the bass all the way up, <laughs> and uh, it just like exploded and uh, I was not I was not expecting a chariot song to be like that that was yeah. just crazy hearing that and also I think this was uh, you know talk about experimentation I think they went really out there with a lot of the stuff they did on this yeah. uh, on this album here um, they they of course did a lot of weird things they uh, brought back a lyric from the fiance um, in the song you which is just like a really peaceful moment. Again, kind of with that reflective thing they tried to keep doing. And that came off, they faced each other on the fiance. Yeah. Um, and I think they, they made a lot of references to a lot of other songs that I think, hindsight bias here, I think the Chariot knew this was their final, this was it. I think they went into that with that idea because on, oh, what, what, one of the songs they say uh, they lost their voice in the choir, and I can only think of, like, the choir from the city, and I just feel like they were kind of at the point of the band where they weren't all sure if they wanted to keep going, and so they the lyrics are very introspective and kind of just, like, Josh being like, I have done all my work, and I'm not sure I can continue on, so and if you look at it that way, I think think you can kind of see that this was that to them and yeah. they made it as experimentally weird as possible because they didn't have a reason to <laughs> didn't have anything back. to hold it up against later you know so yeah i i definitely see that i mean uh i'm not sure if they knew this was really going to be the last one but i think they kind of definitely went in as if it was going to yeah. be their last one it really kind of feels like that same thing with the experimentation there's really no holding back here and it's also they also bring back some sounds uh from other albums as well yeah. like you can hear a little bit of the fiance in here you could hear a little bit of long live um the song first kind of sounds like something off wars and the rumors of wars and even when it goes into that kind of uh, mariachi band sound towards yeah. the end with the trumpets and the guitar uh, and just good, which is just so off the wall. Like that's not something you hear in like metal core or math core or anything. Nothing. Um, it's just completely weird. I, I think love is probably the most traditional song on here. It feels it's a lot faster paced. It feels like off long, uh, long live. Yeah. Um, has more traditional kind of breakdown in it. Even but even that breakdown still. You, you were talking about the time signature. Yeah, it's changing. In a, it's in a three four time signature, and then the rest of the song isn't. But <laughs> Like, there's a few parts that, like, skip in an extra beat, but keep maintain the 3-4, so it's got a, like, different feel. It's yeah. a very... Yeah. This, this entire record's that way. Like, and and in um, just are very, like, out there in terms of trying to piece together where the drums are, like, <laughs> coming in and then how the guitars are doing it. And I think Steven and Brandon really meshed well in writing this album and yeah. 
So it was a bit math, it was a bit metalcore, it was a bit experimental, it was a bit just like eclectic, always at your face. It was very awesome. I, I think it is their most like eclectic album in general. Yeah. Um, it, re it really kind of takes elements from a lot of different stuff that they've done and, and from outside of what they've done. Um, you have Speak, which is just the, the the piano. It's like a simple piano song, and then it has Josh Gogan just screaming those lyrics over it. Right. Um, and then kind of reminds me of you have Cheek, which is probably my favorite closer for any any Chariot album. And it's, yeah. it's really a weird song, too, when you think about it, because it's just... Um, they, took, they took the speech from the movie The Great Dictator by mm -hmm. uh, Charlie Chaplin, and it's, it's all it is is just that speech until the end, and then it brings back in everything else. And it's just so weird to hear that. Like, you're not, it's not something you'd expect off of uh, even the chariot to do in the past. Yeah. Um, and, you know, songs that are like uh, Tongues is very, another kind of heavy, but it's kind of a, a gr uh, grungy or sludgy kind of heavy to it. It's yep. not like just. Um, it's it's not like forget where it's just that powerful in your face heavy, uh, and it's it's interesting that they they really even have that on here, uh, but then they they loosen everything up with like like I was saying first for instance and then and is another song where they kind of go back to a more traditional style, but even even with that traditional style and even with what we might expect from them, it's still got that just weirdness to it. Yeah, and I think a lot of that just came in. Um, I think this was the record that Josh threw everything out there. He threw his entire voice. You can hear, in my, one of my favorite Chariot moments is the end of Cheek, where you can hear him breathing directly into the mic, and you can hear every little part of his vocal box. Yeah. Or same way with Speak. I think that he knew that this was going to be just like where he gave it his all, and if he didn't say what he had to say throughout this, he was like, it sounded like he was, like, tied up, and it's like, all right, spill everything. Yeah. And he did. And I think the rest of the band did as well. Um, tongues, I love the drums of Tongues, and it's, mm -hmm. the, the way it was recorded, I think Matt Goldman really captured, like, the weird energy that David has, and just kind of let him free roam, like, through the middle piano part, through the ending when he comes back. He's just, I think every part of this band, even without Wolf, they went in and just made a solid record from front to back. This is my personal favorite Chariot record because it's so different. Like every part, every song has something that offers a thing. They got the poet um, in Not. They have obviously the Western outro. They have the piano song. They have the sludge song. They have Charlie Chaplin. Everything just meshed well together. Yeah, I, I agree, and I, I think as far as an album goes, people listening to this, um, I think the weird part about it is I think everyone might find a song that they like off this album, but I don't think people like this album as a whole because it's just so out there and because it yeah. kind of incorporates everything. So I don't think this is a great place to start with The Chariot just for that reason, but I think this is really kind of where you can hear them pushing the boundaries, and I think 100%. that's what they started off to do. I, th I think when we started this whole thing with um, their, their first album, I think Josh Gogan really kind of didn't want to make just a normal mathcore album or a normal mathcore band. Um, I think that's part of why he left Norma Jean. Um, and I, I think he wanted to kind of push in new directions yeah. for the genre and for bands and just for himself. And I think it really... Everything kind of culminates on this album, and yep. it really, it really feels like this is just him and all of them together pushing themselves to make something that's different and really kind of stands up against other albums. And you know, I don't necessarily about being one of the best metalcore albums <laughs> of the last decade, but I, I think it's really one of the uh, most earnest records of yeah. of the last decade, at least. I, I mean, it really kind of. It, it, you said they gave it their all on this. Yeah. I really think that. That's I think the did. artistic value of this record is beyond most that um, have been released within yeah. ever. And I hold it at, I don't know, this is just me, so they can fight me on Twitter. <laughs> but um, in my like ideas of like these heavier records, like the ones that are like more poetic and have more to give and more to like 
just throw out there with like an idea in its head like are really great so like this and like Jane Doe from Converge which don't really sound similar but they have that same poetic value like this is just an honest offering this is the most that I think Josh offered to the chariot and besides like fronting the whole thing I think this was just where he was like this is what I have wanted this band to sound like and I think it's um one of the one of the songs I'm kind of spacing that but one of the songs is just like we I think it's not but it's like we sound like what we want this is us like I'm not gonna let anyone else say what we sound like so yeah he's very open on this record and you can hear it and in just his voice and the way he confessed everything you know no I I, I see that I agree with that I mean I, I really I really think that's a good way to to put everything um I, I think they definitely went out on a high note I, I oh, think yeah. they kind of peaked in the sense of this is like if, if long live is like the chariot and what I would think of as the chariot I think this is I think what this is what they wanted the chariot to be and I think yeah. this is they're them pushing themselves the most and um, not and kind of just putting it out there and instead of trying to craft something that they were crafting for everyone else necessarily like I still think this was made for chariot fans and made for people who like music but right. I think this was also probably one of their most personal albums for yeah, them 100% it really feels like that they they took this um and just this is they poured themselves into this yeah. and made it for them and kind of released it and said you know we hope you guys like this we hope you agree with us but you know this is us and yeah I, I think that's that's kind of what they did on here yeah I think they let a lot of influences bleed in that helped um and I always kick myself at like the idea of this but I saw them in Warped Tour in 2013 I believe mm. that's when they joined Warped Tour yeah with Let Live um and so I saw them I was talking to Stevie afterwards and this is why I kind of think I knew they were done yeah so I was talking to Stevie and I was just like so what's what are you guys gonna do in the fall and he's like actually we have something super special planned and I all I can really tell you is that um what's that uh French hardcore band um uh, Birds in Row he said, I just, the only thing I can tell you is if you know Birds in Row, they're going to be supporting us. And next thing you know, it's the freaking breakup tour. Yeah. So, you know, looking back on that conversation, did I really think they were going to break up? No. But then when Stevie was just like, this you is, the, this of, is going to be the most special tour, it's like, yeah, well, okay. They knew at least by that summer after um, One Wing that they were done. So I kind of just have always had in my head that this was it. They knew that. With Wolf leaving and then wanting to go as a four piece, I felt like they didn't want to ever try and replace him. Yeah. And I feel like they were just going to give one last hurrah in Wolf's honor, in their honor, in the idea of the chariot. Yeah, I, I can I could definitely see that. I mean, because um, I, I saw them in 2012, I think like a few months after this came out, was, uh, I saw them in December, and I talked to uh, Stevie and... Um, David after after the show and I, I kind of got the vibe that they were still they weren't sure where they were going yeah so I, I think they went into this um, like I said I definitely think they gave it their all as if this was going to be their last mm -hmm. album but I don't think they were sure that it was going to end until I, I think really around 2013 I, th I think be right before they announced this, that's what they made it sound like when they were talking about is that they weren't. They they kind of had a feeling like they were going to end things, yeah. but I don't think they really wanted to until that point where they realize it's probably the best thing to do. And yeah. um, to be honest, I, I'm. It, it sucks anytime a band breaks up, especially when it's your like favorite band. But like, I'm glad that if they were going to go out, they went out with this. Yeah, you know? I'm glad they didn't try to force themselves to make another album and then tore off that. And then you know, tore off that. They did a year of touring with this, and then we were like, by the way, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Um, also, I don't think I've been as emotionally messed up in the head as when the Chariot announced their breakup video, and it was just yeah. that sad indie song. And then yeah. um, Stevie's friend, I make sure it's. I will make sure it's in the. Um, the like description yeah. but he made that like hour-long documentary yeah. thing and i watched oh, it I and i was I just barely, crying and i could like nine in the morning that. i was just like this is this is the like yeah I, it, you can uh, just hear it in their voices that they were them yeah and it, they took it from long live but it was just like this is us this is free this is what we're doing 
this is our passion. And then they put that into like a documentary about their last tour and it was just like crushing. I, I made the mistake of watching that right before work and I was just, oh, oh my God, I was a wreck that day. That was awful. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, it's a great, it's a great documentary. Yeah. It was well um, done. It's just, if the chariot means something to you, it's, it's going to hit hard. Um, yeah. And that was the thing. They were always that band that's just like, if you could believe in us, you can believe in yourself. And so that I always kind of took that like perfectly. Yeah. And it took me a few years to really grasp that idea. But, you know, if you, it's kind of like that whole thing where like so many people had with Nirvana. It's like, he was just a guy that they made some music. music. And then the next thing you know, like, that's what he was doing. And while well, two different paths happened, but like, if the chariot could come out from the freaking first like EP even of just yeah. the chariot and then make this after like a decade or eight years at basically mm -hmm. there was something to be said. And that growth, I think just is something I look at all the time. And like, they went from people thought they were a joke. People didn't know if they were ever going to like grow up from Norma Jean. People yeah. didn't know what we were going to do. And then it was just like, but then they like came through. I think they're one of the few hardcore metalcore bands I've listened to who actually have a message on stage that I've yeah. actually kind of taken to heart because I mean it's kind of a thing in in metalcore hardcore whatever to get a, the frontman always gets up on stage and says some motivational yeah, thing. It's exactly. mocked often, uh, and a lot of times it, it feels. I mean, it feels it's it feels sincere in, in a most part, but like when you hear every single band doing that after a while, you know, you go to a show and three bands in a row, and you hear the same message over and over again, right. it kind of gets diluted over time. But I think the Chariot was really one of the few bands that really spoke that in their lyrics, as well as Josh on stage, and as well as that. that that's the whole thing I'm talking about with the bond between the audience and them. You really yeah. kind of you almost felt a part of the band when you watched them. Um, it, you you they kind of made you feel a part uh, uh, you know of the actual band it wasn't just singing along it was yep. you, you really kind of felt like the band wasn't just the chariot the band was everybody yeah uh, and, and I well I think long live did the best job at like capturing that and I think this again was more personal for them I still think it really kind of captured it as well in a different way Um and I think people, that's so why I said, like, I don't think it's great for people to start with this album because if you're trying to get into the chariot musically, I don't think you can kind of grasp what this album is right. until you understand what the chariot it's is. About, right. Um, but I mean, just again, I, I really think that concluding with this and ending with this instead of trying to put out something, yeah. you know, as, as much as I would love more, more music <laughs> from the chariot. Yeah. I'd I'd much rather see them do this than than have forced something out that was a you know was lackluster or, or you know even yeah. even if they did a live album I I don't think that would have been as good as the as this yeah. and I'll kind of leave it with this um, kind of my last mark of near proof that uh, this was it for um, Josh on Long Live had the song called The Audience and he was very into bringing the audience into. The idea, and I always took the lyric after I found out they were breaking up. Um, the last things he says on any Chariot record is, the audience is set, now that we've painted faith, shout, victory is ours. So, I think with that, he knew that he had done something. It's that mm -hmm. final, like, he fulfilled that prophecy of the Chariot. Yeah. No, I agree. This yeah. makes sense. So, long live. Long the Chariot. Live. Thanks, thanks for watching. The Chariot, uh really meant a lot to a lot of people, myself yeah. included. So before I go into tears. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, so thank you all for watching the Chariot Review Series. This is the end. Um, if you like what you saw, please go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe to this channel for more videos. You can check out the rest of these videos. A uh, whole playlist of the beginning to now the end. Yep. Um, if you want to follow Sean on Twitter, you can find him. Sean the Captain. At Sean the Captain. And as always, I am at Metal Loud.